Today on the IoT Show, we have Ted Wei from the AI Platform Team that comes to, to talk to us about hardware acceleration uh, for ML at the edge. Hi everyone, this is the IoT Show. This is uh, Olivier here, your host. Thanks for watching. We have Ted Wei today with us. Ted came here to talk about hardware acceleration for machine learning, right? That's right. So, Hardware acceleration is something that is needed, um, but there's tons of things that the AI platform team you belong to is doing. Before jumping into what you guys are doing and how you're helping uh, you know, data scientists and developers, mm -hmm. how about you introduce yourself to our audience and tell us a bit more about what your team is doing and then we'll jump into the topic. All right, great. Thanks, Olivier. My name is Ted Wei, and I'm a program manager on the AI platform team, so specifically on Azure Machine Learning. So Azure Machine Learning is your end-to-end -end data science platform mm -hmm. for everything from building and training your models to hyperparameter tuning, doing your experimentation, building out your pipelines, operationalization and deployment, and then integrating that into an end-to-end -end DevOps loop. And so that's something that we offer. So specifically where I sit is we are going to take that model and operationalize that for you. Okay. Now, not only just operationalizing it, but actually making it run faster on specialized hardware. Okay. And so hardware acceleration, I think people have a notion of what that means and why it's needed, but I think we're going to dive into a bit more details. Mm -hmm. and, and I would like for you as well to kind of highlight uh, in the context of IoT scenarios with edge computing where we need to have the intelligence actually brought all the way down to the hardware for various reasons like non-connectivity or privacy mm -hmm. problems whatnot, mm -hmm. how important that hardware acceleration is and how we are helping developers making these models that are running today in the cloud, running on the edge, on devices, yeah. right? So today, uh, all you're familiar with uh, with IoT is probably in the terms of numbers, right? Yeah. You know, you might have some sensors. You might have like a temperature sensor, or a humidity sensor um, that you might be able to take that data and you can do things like anomaly detection or mm -hmm. forecasting. And those okay. are really cool things that you can do on relatively inexpensive hardware. Mm -hmm. So now the question is, how do you process unstructured data like images yep. or voice or acoustic data? And what's powering all of that is deep neural networks. And yep. so these are really complex AI models. Mm -hmm. um, the traditional neural networks might be one, two, three layers deep. Okay. Uh, but deep neural networks can be as many as 50 to 100, 150 layers deep. Okay. Um, a traditional deep neural network like ResNet 50 takes 8 billion calculations. So taking yeah. that just to calculate, you know, run 8 billion calculations mm -hmm. to figure out what's in an image becomes really expensive really fast. Makes and sense. so on an edge device, we really need to find ways in order to be able to run that super fast. Yeah. And that's why we're here, to really accelerate that using yeah. hardware. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, and, and we'll see that actually, we're talking about edge, but it's also super important to be able to uh, accelerate these uh, algorithms in the cloud as well, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so what is the cross-pollination? How does that work? What are the various options? And mm -hmm. how does uh, hardware acceleration work, especially for us, Microsoft? Yeah, so from a Microsoft perspective, we look at the spectrum of hardware that's available to us. Mm -hmm. So it's not like an either or decision. It's yep. really about what are your needs and uh, what are the best hardware options to meet those needs. And mm -hmm. so if you look at the scale the, of uh, um, uh, efficiency and the scale of flexibility, you know, on your flexibility side, you have your CPUs. Mm -hmm. Super flexible, yep. they run everything. Yep. They're just sequential and so they might not run as fast as you would like them to. Uh, next up, you have your GPUs. And yep. Your GPUs are your workhorses of AI today. Mm -hmm. um, great at parallel processing, um, but they're a little bit more pricey and they draw yep. a lot of power. And yep. so that's the thing about GPUs. Mm -hmm. um, from a more efficient perspective, all the way at the end are your ASICs, application-specific integrated circuits. Okay. And so these are chips that can run um, whatever you want them to run, uh, but you can't change them. And so, so they're programmed. They're, they're programmed. Hard yeah, they're for doing one thing. They're basically. hardened. Yeah. yeah. And so once you create that chip, you put that into a device. Yeah. You know, nothing changes forever. Mm -hmm. um, another one of the options that we're looking at are FPGAs, and mm -hmm. FPGAs are field programmable gate arrays, and these is uh, these are chips that you can essentially reconfigure. So they mm -hmm. have logic blocks on them that mm -hmm. you can reconfigure the routing on. Yeah. And so once you deploy that chip to uh, your oil rig in the middle of the ocean or mm -hmm. to your super secret laboratory, um, yep. you don't need to change that hardware anymore. You can mm -hmm. update that over software. Mm -hmm. So imagine you have a model that does um, image recognition yep. or uh, work for workplace mm -hmm. safety, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. And then six months later, you have an updated model. Yep. You can just update that chip over software. Just uh, reconfigure it over yep. software. It's reconfigured. Yeah, reprogram it. Reprogram, yeah. yeah, with your newest model. Mm -hmm. And then you have the ability to be able to then um, run that new model directly on that hardware. 
So. Okay. So that's there's a huge variety of them. Um, mm -hmm. Today, which one are you using the cloud? Which one are you using on the edge? Yeah. Do we in have the a cloud? Map of that? Yeah, absolutely. In the cloud in Azure, uh, we offer CPUs and GPUs for training. Yeah. And we also have FPGAs for inferencing, uh, in addition to CPUs and GPUs. Okay. So now you have this option uh, to be able to figure out um, what are you trying to optimize for? Um, mm -hmm. Are you do you want to uh, spend less money, but you're willing to wait for your results, or you want to spend a little bit more money, and where you want your results fast? Well. Yeah. Um, nice thing about FPGAs is we're trying to be both cheap and fast. So you have um, the model runs yeah. super fast, and it's very, very competitively priced. So that's what we have on the cloud. Okay. Um, we also have those options on the edge, but we also have ASICs on the edge. Mm -hmm. And the first one that we've been uh, working on is a partnership with Qualcomm and okay. their Snapdragon family of chips. Mm -hmm. So they have um, a digital signal processing unit that yep. accelerates a lot of the processing. Mm -hmm. So what we do is uh, we take that model and we put it onto the Qualcomm device, okay. and we make use of that chip to make AI run faster directly on that chip. And that's what we have on and that's what we have right uh, here. So this here, right? is, yeah, this is the Vision AI developer kit. Okay. And what's on here is, uh, let me jump to that um, slide right there. So basically, on the AI developer kit, we have that uh, Qualcomm chip in there. Yeah, yeah. It's running Yocto Linux. Uh -huh. So it's just an edge device like any other Linux device. Okay. And we have the ability to now uh, convert that model and to deploy it on yeah, there. Okay. With this. So we'll see, we'll see a short and demo. We'll, yeah, we'll yeah, see we'll this see in a short demo. Yeah. So all, all these different options for uh, you know hardware, um, Acceleration. Mm -hmm. I I would assume that to present some you know uh, challenges because yeah. because they are different in nature. So mm -hmm. basically, what you put in there as you know the bare the code right. is different from yes. one to another, right? So when you train your model, mm -hmm. uh, you data scientist, you train the right. model. Mm -hmm. um, you need to export that model in, in a format that will work for these ones, right? That's right. So what's going on on that side? Yeah. Thing? So um, if you just looked at what things would uh, you know what you would have to do today, mm -hmm. um, you would take that model just like you said. You might have your TensorFlow model or your yep. PyTorch model, and you decided to deploy it to um, hardware made by a certain hardware vendor. Yep. You'd have to incorporate their SDK, yep. use your SDK to convert that model and mm -hmm. get it into a form that can then be deployed and run on that chip. Yep. Yep. And then you decide to use a different chip from a different hardware vendor. Well, mm -hmm. Another SDK, yep. 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 another yep. conversion. Yep. And so that's the challenge today um, mm -hmm. with uh, running things on the edge. And yep. so you have uh, a lot of vendors for GPUs, a lot of vendors for neural accelerators. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we're starting our partnership uh, with Qualcomm and with okay. Intel. Okay. And what we want to do is essentially give you that pipeline. Mm -hmm. So you as a data scientist, all you have to worry about yep. is actually nothing at all. You're doing what you're doing today. Mm -hmm. You are building your model, you're training your model yep. in that TensorFlow, PyTorch, Cognitive Toolkit, yeah, whatever yeah. framework you yep. have. And we will have a model converter. Mm -hmm. This will take your model and we will run the SDK of that hardware vendor. Okay. So for Qualcomm, we've incorporated their Snapdragon SDK, okay. convert that model into the DLC format, which is okay. what they use. And then we package that up into a container, mm -hmm. um, just like any other yeah. um, Azure machine learning model. Okay. And then we can now deploy it to this uh, developer kit okay. and run on that accelerated hardware. Yeah. And you happen to use IoT Hub and IoT Edge runtime on the device itself Absolutely. to do the deployment over the year super simply and, and, and easily. So yeah, so basically I imagine the experience would look like I'm the data scientist working mm -hmm. my model. It's like export, like drop down choice of what format, select, done. Right, essentially. Yeah, that's that's yeah. essentially it. Awesome. Yeah, that's that's the the that's, plan. The goal. that's the goal. That's the goal. And then uh, we're we're taking steps towards that goal. And yeah. uh, let's let's talk about what things will look like. Exactly. Um, yep. And we'll start with FPGAs. And um, and so basically, what we have on the FPGA are. Uh, optimized models. Okay. And so going back to that idea of a ResNet 50 model. And the oh. way I like to think about um, what these optimized models do is in the context of, say, a fruit sniffing dog. So let's say you uh, work at the airport mm -hmm. and you have a dog that yeah. is supposed to sniff out fruits, you yeah. know, so to make sure that you know you don't introduce these uh, things into your country. Yeah, yeah. And so fruit sniffing dog at the end of the day is a German Shepherd. Right. Okay. So yeah. a German Shepherd, when a German Shepherd is born, is not trained to sniff out the kinds of fruit that you're looking for. But mm -hmm. the German Shepherd has the infrastructure, yeah. if you will, to be able to take in smells and to be able to distinguish among the smells very, very uh, in a very, very sensitive yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so now what you can do is start training that German Shepherd. Mm -hmm. You can say, hey, this smells like that contraband fruit. Yeah, yeah. This doesn't. This smells like that fruit. This doesn't. Yep. This smells like that fruit. Um, three weeks later, 50 boxes of kibble later, you have yourself a fruit sniffing <laughs> yes. dog, right? I was about <laughs> to ask, how do you treat your, your uh, Azure <laughs> right. backend for learning your model? <laughs> yeah, your model? Like uh, <laughs> boxes of kibble, that's what we do, that's kibble. what we do in <laughs> Azure developers? today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but 
now that you have this fruit sniffing dog, you know, training it wasn't that difficult. Yep. Yeah. Making that German Shepherd is the hard part. And yep. so if you think about German Shepherds, that's what we essentially have on the FPJs today. Yep. So ResNet 50 is a German Shepherd. DenseNet 121 is a German Shepherd. VGG 16 is a German Shepherd. Okay. And now you can take in data and applying that concept of transfer learning, yep. you can then train it to do different things. And so mm -hmm. uh, what I'm showing now is just an example of how you would train um, uh, image classification yep. model with just a data set of cats and dogs. Okay. All you're doing is essentially pointing to a data storage location where yeah. you have uh, pictures of cats and dogs. Yep. And then you're just using uh, Python and yep. TensorFlow. You don't yeah. need to know anything about FPGAs and then you can just run through our sample notebook okay. and then deploy a model into an FPGA. Okay. And that's something similar as we bring it back to the IoT world okay. um, that we did with Jable. And so Jable is a manufacturer. Mm -hmm. What they have are uh, assembly lines and nice. they have AOI cameras that are taking pictures mm -hmm. of the products as they come off the assembly okay. line. Yep. And today a human looks at those pictures and decides do we send it to the next assembly line step okay. or do we scrap it or rework it. So, so I can imagine it's kind of a process where they look at it like yeah. For a long time, or because you have several components on that mm -hmm. on that board, actually, it will take a long time for that yeah. to be processed, right? right? And so basically, the um, and, and so as we think about Microsoft and how we empower people and organizations yep. to achieve more, right? Mm -hmm. You know, um, let's have the human do high value work of understanding what's the root cause of these yeah. uh, defects. You yeah. know, they don't they don't need to be spending time mm -hmm. looking at those pictures and um, just all day. Yeah. And so we built an AI model with Jable data scientists. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you can see here, we have a picture of yeah. one of those components. Mm -hmm. One of those components. Um, and what I'm going to do is send this picture to my model yeah. running on the FPGA, mm -hmm. and then it's going to come back. And you can see that it's coming back in about 12 milliseconds. Okay. And so there's um, the actual ResNet 50 running on this chip is only 1.8 milliseconds. The rest of it is just a little bit of overhead, you know, if we're sending data the across the network, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but 1.8 milliseconds. And that's just an amazing way to get mm. what we call real-time AI because you're able to process data like this. Yep. And that's, that's how you can take amazing. advantage of FPGAs in the yes. cloud. And we're also enabling this in the edge. So data box edge, mm -hmm. every single uh, Microsoft data box edge server will have an FPGA card in it. And what you'll be able to do mm -hmm. is go through the Azure machine learning process, yeah, yeah. train your model, mm -hmm. containerize it, yeah. and deploy it to that data box edge device yeah. with an FPGA. And this device can now be in your factory. Yeah. You can take all of your uh, security mm -hmm. video. You can take all your manufacturing defect video, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, feed it to the server, mm -hmm. and then do your um, uh, inferencing there. So AI in a box. AI in a box, yeah, that's <laughs> right. Exactly, um, love it. And so in a very similar way, Let's talk about what we're doing with the Qualcomm camera. Okay. And same idea. Um, what we're doing is also using the concepts of transfer learning, except yep. instead of ResNet 50, we have another model called MobileNet. Uh -huh. And MobileNet's been optimized to run on mobile devices. Okay. And um, what I have now is a data set of flowers okay. and just uh, running a very similar uh, Jupyter Notebook. Okay. I'm just going to upload my data. Okay. I'm going to uh, train that model mm -hmm. on, the, on the data. Yeah. And then I'm going to now add that extra step of that conversion. So um, <clears throat> what I'm doing is registering that model. Yeah. And I'm going to convert this model to into that form that the um, Qualcomm chip uses. Okay. Yeah. And after that conversion is done, I will be able to create my uh, Docker container. Uh -huh. And this Docker container image is just going to be stored on my Azure Container Registry. OK. And then now. And then you go to IoT Hub configuration, mm -hmm. set up IoT Edge for it to download that container and mm -hmm. run it locally. That's right, and That's running it, it locally. Yep. And so let's Love take it. a look at my camera. And I'm just going to connect to it just using my ADB shell here. Okay. And you'll see right now, I have my IoT Edge agent, IoT Edge, Edge uh, IoT hub module, hub, yeah. and my mobile net flowers module. Okay. So just download it to the device, just like any other IoT Edge module. Okay. And now we're going to switch to the camera. Yeah. And now we'll switch okay. to the camera and take a look at what the camera is actually seeing. So what the yeah. camera is doing is it's taking images on the camera. Mm -hmm. It's uh, sending it to the model. The model is accelerated yeah. on the Qualcomm chips. Yeah. And we're going to see results on that. Um, and this is how we're enabling you to just take your Python, your TensorFlow model, yeah, yeah. and you don't have to worry about anything else. Yeah. We convert that for you and package that up for you. Yeah. You deploy it, and now you can run that directly on the camera. It could be offline. Everything happens down there, mm -hmm. privacy included. Privacy included. Yeah, nothing gets sent to the cloud yeah. unless what you decide gets sent to the cloud. Exactly. Yeah. Just a one or zero, depending right. on the result you want or something. That's right. Right. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Okay. Great.
You want to? Yes. Let's, yeah. Let's, let's switch, switch over to the, to the camera. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's let's switch to the camera right here. All right. Cool. Well, let's see what the camera actually sees yeah. and what kind of inferencing is doing. Yeah. I have some pictures of flowers here. I trained this on the flowers data set. Okay. And you should be able to see that it's uh, looking at pictures of roses. And then if we switch over to pictures of tulips, we should be able to see that it recognizes tulips. And so that's the basic yeah. idea. The processing is done ex yeah, directly on this camera. Everything on this camera on the Qualcomm chip. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And it's been actually packaged super straightforwardly um, from the cloud on Android ML. Yeah. And so if you have 10,000 of these cameras, you have your IoT hub, deploy the same model to all your 10,000 cameras. And that's, that's awesome. everything. And you can that update you that model on the fly. You can update that model yeah. too. Yes. Awesome. Well, thanks, Dad, for that uh, you know, overview of what hardware acceleration means for ML at the edge or AI at the edge. I uh, hope to see you soon for more of AI at the edge topics. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. <laughs> and uh, don't forget to subscribe for the IT show.